those of you that don't know me, I'm Jonathan Stanton from the Health Department. I'm our stormwater program uh, coordinator. Um, we work with a lot of the 21 municipalities that are in SWIMA, uh, help them with their stormwater program. Um, I know a lot of you may be from the city, uh, so like I said, uh, you know, I do, I do more of the coordination and monitoring that type of stuff. Uh, purpose of this workshop, the purpose of the road sedimentation control ordinance is to reduce ordinate erosion and sedimentation problems. Uh, it is your responsibility to keep sedimentation on your site, uh, on your site with not allowing sediment onto adjacent property, storm drains, ditches, creeks, etc. Uh, make sure that that sediment definitely stays on your site. Uh, we don't want to see it out in the roads. We don't want to see it uh, leaving, going to somebody else's property. Just make sure you keep your stuff maintained, uh, like we were talking about. Keep keep that sediment where it needs to be. Um, and one of the biggest things, like we said, like I said in the video is just making sure that you don't just go in there and just grade that property completely. Um, that will save you a lot of cost in back-end sediment removal because if you leave some of that property uh, either wooded or grass, it will definitely alleviate a lot of that sediment runoff that's going to go into the street, that's going to go in your cell fences, it'll decrease your maintenance issues, that type of stuff. Uh, the erosion sedimentation control ordinance that's adopted right now um, was adopted in 1999 and it went into effect October 1999. Who needs a land disturbing permit? <coughs> Make sure you, uh, any land disturbing activity that involves creating areas of bare earth, clearing, grading, that type of stuff, make sure you have a land permit. Sites having a disturbed area of less than one acre should be permitted through Jefferson County Department of Health along with the local municipality. Make sure that when you're with the local municipality, uh, that they notify us that there's a site there. Uh, they will be more of the regulatory authority on your site. Uh, their building inspectors are doing the inspections right now. Uh, we kind of come in periodically if we see problems or anything like that to you know, provide an aid for the building inspectors. Uh, construction sites having a disturbed area of one acre or greater should have an ATEM permit which should be posted at all times. JCA will still be monitoring these sites. Just because you have an ATEM permit does not mean we're not looking at your site. That does not mean that the city does not have a regulatory authority over that site. Uh, that will be a big change coming in the erosion sedimentation control ordinance is the city is going to have more power as far as that kind of stuff comes. Um, because EPA has pretty much said they had to. They had to be more involved. So those sites will still be monitored. Um, so if you're a city employee in here or you're a builder, just make sure that any site in your city is in compliance. Um, you know, there's ADEM's Birmingham field office number down there. Uh, construction sites permit through ADEM are required to have an acknowledgement letter from JCA prior to commencing work or your municipality. Uh, make sure that they know that you're commencing work. Uh, you have to have the notice of registration for the site. These are for ATEM sites now, not home builder sites. ATEM NOR receive a set of BMP plan for the site prepared by QCP. Uh, so make sure if you're in a big development that whoever your developer is has these things. This does not mean your site will not be monitored by JCDH or whichever municipality the site falls under. So just because you're in a bigger development does not mean it's not going to be monitored. Uh, and does not mean you're not responsible because I know a lot of multi-developments, you have a developer, you have 12 or 13 home builders that are all in the site. You will be responsible for your site. You will be responsible for your contributions uh, to the overall. If you're, if you're polluting the sediment pond to a point where the sediment pond is failing, you know, you need to clean up your site. Uh, that's not your developer's responsibility, that's yours as well. Uh, so make sure your developer is doing what they're supposed to be doing. Uh, proper installation of BMP is essential to keeping our waterways clean. Uh, basically these BMPs, if you look at 303Ds in Jefferson County alone, most of them are due to siltation. Uh, that's due to urban runoff, that's due partially to construction practices, um, but you know, also like I said, there is a natural amount of runoff as well. A lot of the streams and creeks in Jefferson County do have, you know, a natural sediment load. 
we're really working hard at JCDH to determine what that is. Uh, so, you know, where we can get a better idea of kind of what what is a normal baseline. But you definitely can tell when it rains. Uh, sediment control is important all over the site because sediment may leave the property during a rain event. Always make sure the following is done. Just because this site may have an area that you don't think sediment is going to build up in doesn't mean that it always happens that way. Um, I've seen silt fences, like I said, that are all the way full and that, that water just goes a total different direction than you thought it would. So just make sure that you've got your site pretty much fenced in where that sediment doesn't leave. Uh, that's why the construction interest is also very important. Silt fencing is trenched in and maintained. Make sure you trench in your silt fence. It needs to be six inches in the ground and it does not need to be that far where people can see underneath. It also needs to be maintained. There, once it starts building up behind it, you know, you need to get in there with a shovel or whatever it takes just to get that stuff off of the silt fence because it renders the silt fence ineffective. Uh, hay bales trenched in estate. Hay bales are no longer, ADEM doesn't recognize them as a primary but they are used as secondary erosion. So you can use hay bales, you just gotta use a silt fence behind them. Uh, just make sure that you use them as primary and secondaries. Construction ex exit pad in working order. If your construction exit pad sinks, make sure you fix it. Uh, make sure that if your construction exit pad, if you look at the site on the street and that city street just has dirt left and right where y'all been driving trucks out of it, make sure that that place is clean um, because that's part of your permit just make sure that it goes that way sod grassing as soon as possible sometimes uh, sodding in strips is a good idea to keep the sediment from going off your site um, you can actually if you've got a slope site and I know there's a lot of those in Jefferson County uh, make sure that you put maybe just a row of sod right there just to keep it in place where that sediment doesn't continue to build down the slope because if you have a tendency just to put a silt fence at the edge of the slope and that slope is 25% or greater, water coming down that slope is going to wash that silt fence out every time. So just make sure that instead of trying to put the silt fence at the bottom, you gradually slow the water down or gradually take the sediment out. Intermediate cleanup if and when required. Just make sure, like I said, you're checking after every 0.75 inches of rain to make sure your site's in compliance. Trash receptacle, uh, you need a place to store your trash. You can't burn it, uh, you can't build a silt fence area and throw the trash in it. Um, like I said, with Jefferson County Department of Health, we do, if I see burning, you know, right now you can't burn. Uh, and most people know that's a Jefferson County rule this time of year that you can't burn. There's only certain times, and basically you need to get permission before you do that. You can't just burn trash on site. Um, so make sure you, you have the proper trash receptacle and you dispose of it. Uh, all other BMPs in good work, good and working order. Make sure everything's in place and the way it needs to be. Silt fences. These are going to be your principal mode of action. I mean, basically they are your principal sediment control that you see on probably 95% of construction sites. The action is to slow and pile the water and allow the soil particles to settle. Basically, you look at it kind of the concept of they're like mini detention ponds. Um, the, the, law, the more settling you have by there, like he said, the flatter the area, the more sediment's actually going to settle there. But, like I said, if you've got a hole underneath the silt fence, it's a hole in the detention pond. It's not going to do anything. It's going to run right through that hole, and then that sediment's going to go wherever it may. So make sure you don't have any holes in the fence or really around or under the fence is the main thing. Sediment shall be cleaned from behind the fence when it reaches 50% of the design impoundment height. Nine inches is a good number just to keep in mind. So when it gets halfway up it needs to be cleaned because that next storm event is going to probably push it over because you never know in Jefferson County when it's going to, when we're going to get a big one. 